the second segment, we'll be looking at the rest of the voicings for our arpeggios. We had already covered a major arpeggio with a root on the fifth string. For a root on the fourth string, it'll be the same fingering once again. So we'll still have the first finger going one fret back, then the fourth finger going three frets up, and then when we get to the first string where we're skipping over the second, the first finger stretches back to the third fret, and the fourth finger goes to the seventh fret. For our minor arpeggios, we're going to change our fingering slightly. So I'll still have the second finger on the root note on the fifth string. Now I'll start by scooting my first finger back one fret. So I'll be going from the fifth fret here to the third fret on the fourth string, and then hammering on to the seventh fret of that fourth string. So that's the beginnings. And then when I go up to hit the next note, I'll be on the third fret of the second string once again, but I won't have to stretch quite as far with this fourth finger, I'll just be going to the sixth fret of the uh, second string. You may want to use your third finger there so that the fourth finger is still ready to go back to that seventh fret. So you have a little stretch here from the third fret to the sixth with your third finger on that second string. When we get to the fourth uh, string, our fingering will be the same. So that gets us through major and minor chords. To get through a diatonic key, there's only one other kind of chord we need, and that's a diminished chord. And that would be the seventh uh, degree of your major scale. So to do a diminished fingering, you'll want to start with your third finger on the root note. In this case, fifth fret, fifth string. We'll use the third finger on the third fret of the fourth string. And just, this is a very easy span here. We'll use the fourth finger on the sixth fret of that fourth string and then we'll use the same fingering on the second string. And then the same thing on the root note being on the fourth string. And so that gives us our diminished arpeggio. And that one is useful because it's really a connecting chord. When you hear a diminished chord, it's almost always on its way somewhere. And they're also useful in some uh, chromatic types of applications. So that's one that you'll definitely use at some point. So in our next segment, we'll be taking these arpeggios that we just looked at, we'll put them in a key, and then we'll look at an application where we can look at it in a little bit more musical of a setting. Hi, I'm Jeff Carlisi from 38 Special. It's nice to be with you today. The technique, once again, is holding the pick between the thumb and the forefinger and then using third and fourth fingers to, um, to pick the chord. That's that whole Jerry Reed um, 